Yeah, it is alarming because at the time when Najib was there, he kept on borrowing without caring how much money he has already borrowed. Now we had to announce this because if when Najib had continued to be the Prime Minister, the amount would grow even more because fully aware that we cannot pay debts, he still incurred more debts. You know, he knew very well that uh, the ECRL, for example, is not something we can afford. And it is a luxury, it is not going to serve any purpose. It will give us no return. And yet he went ahead and decided to build these gift contracts and all that. And that cost about 60 billion. The government ceiling before was less, very much lower. I think, uh, I, I forgot really what is the ceiling for borrowing by the government. But certainly, it does not count in billions. It's really in hundreds of millions and all that. But he doesn't care. You see, what he does is, if he does it in the government, he's subjected to the ceiling. So he forms another body, and then they borrow. Eventually, it becomes a government, you see. And you, you know, he wants to build the East Coast Railway. That's 60 billion. In the final uh, uh, account, it shows that by the time we pay, it will be 92 billion. You see? Because we have to pay interest and all that. And then at the same time, he decided, I'll build the uh, uh, high, high speed rail. And that's 100 something billion. You know, it's crazy. He it doesn't seem to think, how do we pay? You see? But we announce it, it should reassure the people that we are going to cut this down so they should feel more comfortable. I don't think they should feel very comfortable if Najib had gone ahead with all this uh, massive spending, very, very big spending. Each one of them costs huge sums of money. Much of the work being done now is to downsize the government, downsize the financing of the government by doing away with all these uh, extraneous uh, projects. We are already reducing the servicing costs. At the same time, of course, I, if we make a comparison, I had the experience of, of the 22 years. In the, the 90s, our income was about one-third or what Najib is collecting. Now people talk in billions. During my time, we talk about hundreds of millions. So the income is about three times more. Now if that income had been well managed, there should be no problem. So by reducing the cost of the government, we should be able to manage in terms of uh, administration. But in the case of the debts we have to pay, then we will find other ways of actually reducing the debt. I can see at one go, we can actually reduce our debt by 200 billion by doing away with all these huge projects. And of course, the BN Manifesto talks about each state getting 60, 70, 80 billion ringgit. I don't know how he can make that statement and people swallow it. There's no way the federal government can spend 60, 70 billion on each state. The, the states are being run on a shoestring. You know? Some of the states are rich, like Stangor is rich, of course. But uh, Kedah, Perlis, Kelantan, Terengganu, they can't afford. He cannot give that kind of money. And yet he announced it with a great deal of big smile and all that. He's going to give this thing. It's ridiculous. The main thing is we don't want to punish the people. At the same time, we have to ensure that government must have some money to build road. I think it's not underreporting. Even the amount that mentioned, were mentioned by Najib should be obvious. It's unsustainable. I mean, he wants to spend 60 billion here, 60 billion here, 
180 billion here. How can you borrow money and do all these things? You know, before we built, we built the North South Highway, we built the airport, we built the ports and all that. But those were built within our means. We didn't incur big borrowings. But he, it is obvious, I think, to the whole nation, certainly to the business community, it should be obvious that he is spending money that he cannot even, he cannot, ha he doesn't have and cannot even pay if he borrows.